Wi-Fi 7 has a major problem. Actually, three major problems. But spoiler alert, it's not Wi-Fi 7's fault. So stick around, this is gonna be good. Wireless technology has come a long way in the last six or seven years. And we've gone from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 6E to Wi-Fi 7. And yes, Wi-Fi 8 is coming soon. But while all these new technologies sound great, there is a major problem with Wi-Fi 7. So we're gonna discuss those problems and the solutions. Wi-Fi 7, also known as IEEE 802.11BE, is the newest wireless standard. Wi-Fi 7's key features are 46 gigabits per second theoretical data rates, 320 megahertz channel bandwidths, 4096 QAM, and MLO, multi-link operation. And Wi-Fi 7 supports tri-band operation using the 2.4, the 5, and the 6 gigahertz bands. It also utilizes advanced technologies like OFDMA and MU MIMO to optimize performance. And all these specifications sound great, but there are some major problems here. You see, Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E share one common feature, and that's the 6 gigahertz band. This band has higher speeds and lower latency than the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz bands. And on paper, this does sound great. But in reality, there are three major problems with this new band. The first problem is probably the biggest issue, and that's connecting to this new band. What these router companies will not tell you is that most, if not all, your devices will not connect to the faster band. If your smartphones, TVs, laptops, tablets, gaming consoles, and IoT devices are over three years old, then you will not be able to connect to this band. And that's because these devices need a wireless card, which requires a specialized chipset and other hardware components that are different from those used in older Wi-Fi standards, like Wi-Fi 6. So if you think a software update or a firmware update is all you need, well, that won't work. This is a hardware issue. And to make matters worse, if you don't have this Wi-Fi chipset in your device, you won't even be able to see the SSID in the network connection list. Yikes. So what's the solution to this problem? Well, you'll have to buy all new devices that support Wi-Fi 7. But here is another problem. Only the newer smartphones, laptops, and PS5s are compatible with Wi-Fi 7. TVs, tablets, streaming boxes, and IoT devices are not yet available with the new Wi-Fi 7 chipset. However, some of these devices can connect to the 6 gigahertz band, but only have Wi-Fi 6E capabilities, which means slower speeds and higher latency. Just so you understand, Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E are not the same. They both share the same 6 gigahertz band, but Wi-Fi 7 can achieve speeds up to 46 gigabits per second, and Wi-Fi 6E maxes out at 9.6 gigabits per second, which is a huge difference. But here is the second problem with Wi-Fi 7, and that's the range of the 6 gigahertz band. Even if you are able to connect to the brand new 6 gigahertz band, you'll need to be very close to the router. In my testing, I found 50 feet to be the max distance, and that's with direct line of sight to the router, which means no walls. Just to be clear, this new band does not go through floors or walls without suffering major interference or complete signal loss. So what's the solution? Make sure your router is in the middle of the home and stay close to it with a direct line of sight. However, this is probably not feasible for most homes and it all depends upon your network setup. And that brings us to the third problem of Wi-Fi 7. And we're talking about speeds. 46 gigabits per second is a huge number, but that's only theoretical. You see, most households only have one gig speeds or less. And I would say most homes are way less than that. Most likely 500 megabits per second or less. But here's the most interesting numbers when it comes to speed. Let's talk about the band speeds. The 2.4 gigahertz band has a max speed of 100 megabits per second. The five gigahertz band has max speeds of one gig and the six gigahertz band has a max speed of two gigs. So if you have a Wi-Fi 7 laptop connected to a Wi-Fi 7 router, at close range, and you're connected to the six gigahertz band, you will only get your max ISP speeds of one gig or less, unless you have a multi-gig plan, which most people don't have. So what's the solution? Upgrade your ISP plan to a multi-gig plan, like two gig or three gig. However, that's not usually an option, and that can be rather expensive. So what's the bottom line? If you have no plans on upgrading your devices or your ISP plan to a multi-gig plan, then you should avoid buying a Wi-Fi 7 or even a Wi-Fi 6E router because it won't make any difference. However, if you plan on buying new devices and upgrading your ISP plan to a multi-gig plan, then buying a Wi-Fi 7 or Wi-Fi 6E router makes sense. Because in my opinion, it's always good to future-proof your home network. 
Wi-Fi 7 technology is amazing, but our ISP plans and devices have not caught up with it yet. If you want the easiest and most cost-effective solution, then buy a Wi-Fi 6 router and call it a day. Forget about the 6 gigahertz band for now. But there is a bit of good news, and that's the latency improvements of Wi-Fi 7. If you're a gamer or you stream 4K or 8K, then Wi-Fi 7 will minimize your latency. However, if you're really serious about gaming or streaming 4K, then you should use a wired connection. Wired is faster, more secure, and more reliable. Just saying. Wi-Fi 7 is amazing, but the world isn't quite ready for it yet. I'm Michael Scott. Thanks for watching.